so much for having a chat with us today, Alex. Um, we are so excited to um, chat all things your new um, EP, uh, Rage and All Its Friends. And it's to us, we're like, we've done a bit of reading, we've listened to the singles that have been released, which are all incredible, by the way. Uh, and oh, it, thanks. it really marks a significant shift in your musical journey. Um, can you describe to us what makes the EP? Um, maybe a little bit different or the changes you made, um, yeah, to get this EP out? Um, I guess, like, there, well, I did a lot more um, songs to prepare, I guess, for it. I tried to write 50 songs to go into an EP, whereas usually I write a full album and that's it, like, kind of write the album for the album and, and don't really think about songs on their own, or at least uh, that's what I've done for the two that I've done. And, like, yeah, so I think that this one was more picking the songs that we like on their own the most, and that was a really fun process because there were songs that I did with other writers and there were songs I did on my own. And, um, yeah, so it was a bit it was a bit more of, a, I guess, a collaborative process and, a, and um, yeah, used other people's brains and I think... I guess it was probably more single focused of songs. Like we knew that it wasn't going to be an album with album tracks and singles. Mm -hmm. It's probably going to be, you know, five singles and six songs or something like that. So, yeah, they were all considered to be, I guess, people's favourite out of the, I think it ended up being 35 songs that we all picked from or something. So, um, yeah, it was definitely a different process and I think that kind of, meant that by the time we got to the end of it we were all feeling really sure and yeah it gave me a little bit more confidence maybe and so when we got into the recording studio I knew kind of where I wanted them to fit and and was maybe had a clearer idea of what production could be like because it was a longer process of um whittling them down and yeah so very interesting you mentioned that it started at 50 and then went down to 35 and then to your final little collection um, for your EP. I'd love to know how long did it take to create the 50 songs and were they all within a similar time period or were the 50 were, I don't know, some of them were from years ago and some of them were from, you know, little music you had recently? Like, yeah, tell us a little bit more about that, please. Um. Yeah, so, well, I think in the end the aim was 50. I reckon I got to 42. That's awesome. And then kind of what the plan was, like it was it was definitely down to me. Like I was just like I just want to change how I do it. I want to write more songs and just not worry about because I think it's kind of stressful doing albums and because of the environment, I guess, that it's in is like, yeah, I don't know. Like I guess I felt like I put – so much onus on all the these 10 songs that I was putting on the albums and it's like it it, it makes it a bit more stressful mm -hmm. um and I wanted to make it a bit more fun so I think it was songs that I wrote over the two years between um uh, how to grow a sunflower and now so 2022 and now and then oh it was 20, yeah 2022 and oh I could be wrong who knows um, and yeah, yeah, that sounds right. That sounds right to me. I think um, so. There was like lots, of, lots of songs in a in over a long time, and then there was a few songs that were kind of, I guess, before I started NIDA, which was the start of this year. I did acting school this year for the whole year full time, so I was knowing that I was going to record the week before or, or in January, or February this year, and so up until that point, I kind of like and started writing a lot more songs, did a lot more sessions and I did co-writing sessions with like the purpose of coming out with this, with a song and like, yeah, that was, uh, I guess the process. So yeah, I guess some of them were from writing camps, like from um, the World Pride writing camp, which was If You Have To Go and then other ones were just random songs that I wrote like along the way and then towards the end, I guess I did like a bunch of songwriting um, uh sessions with writers like specifically for this EP and that was actually the end I wrote Numb and Road Rage on my own 
if you had to go was from a from the World Pride um choice van camp, then there was uh wow, which ones changed was me, Lisa Mitchell and Vlada, which was I wrote it by myself, kind of sent it to them. We practiced in in person, so that was a bit more organic. Um fuck then I've forgotten the two other ones. Yeah. Road Rage. And, um, with Paul Kelly. Cole, Cole Pizza was with Paul Kelly. Yeah. Obviously, that was a very planned situation. And that wasn't for the EP. That was more like, I think, at a time when I was thinking, like, I want to write with other people. I want to try different ways of doing stuff. Mm. And Paul was obviously someone that, and that was during COVID. So that was years ago that that was kind of in the making from. Mm. Um, and Paul had said yes in, you know, 2020 or whatever. And then time, place, all of that stuff. We, yeah, we got to, I think it was 2022, and we ended up doing a session just after the Courtney Barnett writing camp. So I was kind of in the mode of working with others and stuff like that. So, yeah, I guess um, it's all different. And I don't know. I guess the, the short answer is the last two years. The long answer is it was, they were just from so many different places. It wasn't like I was, I think it, there were there were obviously so many songs, forty two songs that were like, yeah, a lot of them were towards the end, and I think it would have been sad for me if it was just like all these ones that felt like I was pounding them out. Yeah. And it's nice to me that they're all from these different worlds, and they all through different processes worked in their own way and made sense together, um, which is helped by the production process because you're doing it all at the same time. That's so cool. And look, you've actually taken the next question out of my mouth organically. Which oh, is, sorry about that. So don't apologise. It's a, it's a great kind of continuation. Can you paint us a picture mm. of it doing, like, say, the Troy Savan writing camp? For us, you know, we're, we're, we've not kind of had that world, but that just sounds pretty iconic. And we did actually do a bit of reading. Yeah. But, but there, there was a bit of um, teary eyes after your <laughs> songs that you made with um, in that writing camp. Yeah, paint us a picture in that world. And then even like uh, working with Paul Kelly, I've written this down, you know, Gordy, uh, Lisa Mitchell, Benjamin Francis, Leftwich. Um, yeah. Tell, tell us a bit of, paint us a picture about these kind of experiences and that kind of, um, yeah, if you don't mind. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Um, I mean, the Choice of Arm Writing Camp, those Song Hubs camps are pretty amazing. They're like where you go for four days, um, three or four days, and you kind of, they can be all over the world. They're run by the APRA, the Australian Music um, Body, and they are sometimes led by an artist so an artist will pick artists to to have the camp with and then they match up a producer a writer and an artist and then for the four days each kind of pod makes a song and so yeah I've done I think I've done three or four of them and I've done the Courtney Barnett one and the Choice Farm one and those things are like you're matched with randoms usually and you sit down in a room and you all try and come up with a song in a day and record it. So that's a pretty weird process. And for mine, I was paired with Mona Kishoy who did all the production and I did all the writing and the singing. Um, so that was quite nice and I just got to kind of sit around and write for the day and um, I already had most of the lines from my book, which was kind of cheating, I guess. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, I just, like put it all put it all into a song and then we recorded the guitar and the thing and then yeah so that was that one and then I guess the writing presentation day is like at the end and you show everyone shows their songs and we showed that song and Troy really liked it and Leland his writer really liked it and so that was like a bit encouraging and I think that's basically what you sometimes live up in music is like someone being like you did okay and you're like okay I'm doing okay <laughs> um but it's, yeah, not as momentous, I, I guess, as, like, yeah, like, we played the songs and then you're kind of, like, I was kind of, like, looking at Troy and seeing if he was reacting and I saw him be a bit, like, sullen and, like, glassy-eyed and you were, like, oh, okay, cool. Like, I <laughs> oh, oh, that's <laughs> um, resonating. That was pretty beautiful. Yeah, and so, and then, and then co-writes in general, I've always hated them. I don't like working. <laughs> I like working on my own. I like to take my toys and sit in the corner. Um, but I've slowly <laughs> learned to 
uh she sharing is caring and sometimes <laughs> sometimes other people have good ideas i guess <laughs> um, have to. Uh, no, <laughs> um but no i don't even think it's i don't even think it's that it's just for me like i find it really hard to like think quickly on the spot and like so like i'm not super great at reading and writing and, and i just get overwhelmed so i like yeah i just never have thought it was I was able to catch up and then I kind of was just like okay well lots of people do it let's just give it a go and I think after I'd done the Courtney Barnett writing camp and the writing with Troy I mean the writing with Paul Kelly I was like okay maybe there's other people that have because I found the experience with Paul really great because he likes co-writing but also writes a lot on his own obviously Mm -hmm. and um I I think probably because I've learned to write from him, I write in a similar-ish way. Mm. He's very considered, he's very slow, and he took his own time. And I guess what I thought I had to do in sessions is, like, speed up and, like, get the song done. And he was very, very methodical and very, like, thoughtful about it and creative. And, you know, I I wanted to get down to writing How to Make Gravy and do it right away (laughs) and he was like what if we wrote a song about I don't know something silly and I was like what do you mean we have to write something about (laughs) and like and then like yeah I kind of got it and I was like oh the reason you can still do this is because you're still kind of having fun and you're able to you know keep the way that you do it and not rush everything and so that was really helpful and then I was like oh there's probably other people that could help me do what I do with other people around and so that was when I started reaching out to other people like like Benjamin and um yeah like that was a really nice session because he's also very thoughtful and slow Mm -hmm. and he let me kind of do my own little chaos map (laughs) and and was able to just like slip in a few ideas in there and and yeah kind of made me tip my head up and be like huh okay yeah that's actually a pretty good idea maybe I could put that there or something and so like yeah it was it felt like I was in like year three and learning to play with other people and (laughs) (laughs) use use my blocks Uh, yeah I was like okay I guess you can play with some of my lego if (laughs) you really want to um and yeah so then I oh it's change it's six songs change if you have to go, numb, road rage, cold pizza. Um, another one. Is it one of the? Am I silly? We've done the three. It's, is it one of this? Let me double check. I'm um. Numb, road rage, actually the end. Numb, road rage, actually the end. Cold pizza. Is it? If you have to go. Yeah, maybe I'm just counting wrong. I think that's what's happening. (laughs) There's six. I've got to have my phone. I'm going to have a look. Um, Disco. Yeah, but, like, like honestly, there were a lot more co-writes than um, just me writing. So the fact that two of them made the cut as well was was kind of encouraging for me because I was like, Maybe I'm just better with other people. I've been making a mistake the whole time, but I think that Road Rage and Numb, I got to make on my own and I'm proud of them as, like, helpful for me. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, definitely. It's so funny you say the thing about, like, the idea of collaboration because we are literally the exact opposite of that. We, yeah. you know, are, yeah. or, you know, oh, you know, creating together. So then, like, doing stuff separately at first was really difficult for us. But, like, yeah. now we're like, like, oh, my God, who are yeah. you? Well, yeah. What do I do? So yeah. it's like, we could I yep. do something from you. Yeah. This. this is, um, yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, literally mirror that. But um, you did mention something that really interested me. And um, I've always been curious about this, about you in general. But um, you do um, acting school at NIDA. And I'd love to understand... Yeah how your acting and music sort of um, creativity aligns. Do you feel as though with acting you are coming from a place of, you know, pretend and, you know, not addressing direct emotions inside or, you know, as opposed to music, which are, you know, very deeply personal ruminations that, you know, we've all grown to know and love about you, how you're so 
um, universal at conveying, you know, your own feelings, but in a way that we can all kind of palpably connect with. Um, yeah, so, sorry, long-winded way of asking. <laughs> um, <laughs> how do you find um, creatively expressing yourself in acting differs to music? Hmm. Yeah, that's a great question. I At first, I didn't really get it. I didn't find it creative. And, and I think I, I kind of knew that, like, it would be something that interests me. Mm -hmm. um, I... Yeah, I love TV. I love, like, I mostly love TV. I don't watch that many movies. I'm not, like, a film person. I, like, don't know about Shawshank Redemption and all that stuff. <laughs> and I got to NIDA and I definitely felt like an outsider because I was not in, like, a, but just in, like, a, I just didn't feel like I knew enough, a bit of imposter syndrome. Mm. And I think about halfway through the year, I started to be like, oh, okay, you have to, like, with music, I think the the amazing thing is I can go and sit on my own for hours, come up with this thing, and then present it to the people. I think the hard thing about acting is you've got to prepare and prepare, but then you've got to deliver on the in the moment mm -hmm. the thing in front of all of the people. So I think I had to do a scene from the <laughs> queer Christmas movie Happiest Season oh. at one point in the year. <laughs> And it was the scene, I don't know if you guys have seen it. Have you seen it? Happiest season. That's not the one with Kirsten Stewart, is it? Is it the one? Yeah. 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 We watched that. We watched that the movies. <laughs> we were like, the yeah, it's people there, but we were like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, and like, I had to do a scene where, like, um, yeah, where Kristen Stewart's character, Abby, is talking to her friend. Um, and telling him that he doesn't, she doesn't think that um, her partner is going to come out to her family. And, like, it was, I think it was that that clicked because we'd done a lot of scenes and I just didn't get it. I was just like, what's the fucking point? Who cares if I pick up this glass and put it over there authentically? Or, like, I can pretend to be a fucking giraffe really well in the corner I just don't understand this this doesn't make a difference like <laughs> yeah. I love writing stuff and it's really interesting and and yeah I can see what impact it has on people oh, I don't know what this is but I think like yeah when we did that scene and I had to kind of show in the second how heartbreaking it is for this person and mm -hmm. their whole world and like get across yeah, without overdoing it, I think I was like, oh, okay, I get that. Because when I was writing Not Worth Hiding, it was like not overdoing it is how to get people's and not underdoing it and getting it this perfect note where people can completely understand that you're a human being who's experiencing things similar to them that um, are difficult and complicated and hard and you're just trying to work it out. And I think that that was where I was like, oh, if I can just like hit this perfect note here where I'm like, my my partner's not going to come out. And like, it was so weird because I started crying in the scene and I'd never cried on screen before. And I was just like doing it. And I did a shit job of doing the right eye line and I did a whole bunch of things wrong. But it was the first moment where I was like, oh okay because I could feel the the room ch shift in the same way as it does in music when you hit the right yeah. note playing live oh, and the mood shifts and suddenly you're like oh people are really watching and now I've got something the and I'm gonna hold it and so I was like okay that's that dynamic that has to happen and if I'm connecting with Jules my little scene partner that's how that is shown and that is important for people so I think it was less about like finding the it was finding the creativity in it by finding how it could be helpful and important for others because I was just like mm -hmm. I just don't get this this seems silly like I'm just pretending to be Jane or whatever who's I don't know lost her frog how is that who cares and then it was like, okay, this is like really important for people. And there's TV shows and characters that change people's lives. And this is yeah. a collaborative thing that happens. And yeah, so I don't know if that is helpful, but that was that was definitely the shift. It's like now I respect acting as a thing and I have to take it seriously and I <laughs> have to hit yeah. the right things. And yeah. 
to be a fly on the wall in that room that would be have been so cool I don't I don't know much I don't, I don't think it was about eyelines or anything like that I've been like yes well done <laughs> yeah, I was, I was, I was it's just me ugly crying and like trying to remember my lines so <laughs> it was definitely nothing like worth watching but like yeah it's I can't it. I can't. <laughs> yeah, we do we do kind of cover this idea of um your new ep it does have a lot of um, big emotions you know grief anger um all of those kind of really difficult emotions um a lot of people kind of find difficult to process you know like it is kind of something where they go right, too hard basket gonna put a pen in it yeah. we're, we're just gonna leave that of that shit down yeah exactly and that, obviously that's not really ideal it just doesn't really yeah um processing those yeah, processing those emotions um, was making that EP kind of a way to massage and sit with those uncomfortable feelings or was it, I don't know, did you find, like, was that helpful or, yeah? Um, it's so interesting because I guess, like, it was only afterwards that I could kind of see, like, what I was dealing with. Like, I was... It's not like I write songs and I'm like fully, I don't know, like sometimes it's like like road rage or something like that. I'll write that and then I'll be like, oh, it seems like you're, then I can be like, oh, it seems like you're experiencing like despair and anger and like, you know, a bit of disillusion in the world. But it's only really after I've written the song and after it's like been around for a while that I'm like, oh, you were probably feeling this. Mm. So I guess it probably was like, cathartic or helping me digest it all in a way but like it was definitely in real time and it was definitely it's definitely only now that the songs are coming out and I think that people are having like reactions to them or or talking about them that I'm like or just me like having to learn the lyrics for the friggin tour I'm like oh my god I said that that's (laughs) okay yeah I was obviously feeling quite bad. No, no, <laughs> no, well, I was yeah. feeling like, really annoyed at the world or like, mm. yeah, it was funny like afterwards that I was like, I think this is like the five stages of grief in like songs or like, yeah. yeah. So like, yeah, it was helpful, but I think, yeah, I think I can't remember who talked about it, but someone said that like art is not therapy, therapy is therapy. And <laughs> that was really good. Like oh, art is like very helpful and cathartic and like definitely getting it all out was good. But like, yeah, it just like, <laughs> it, didn't, it didn't fix it all. <laughs> yeah, therapy is therapy. Absolutely. We enjoy it. Therapy is therapy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. I love that. So <laughs> would you say, do you have any sort of, I guess, advice or I guess, notions from yourself who has been through these really, you know, difficult moments and maybe a listener might listen to one of your tracks and be like, this is me right now. Mm -hmm. Do you have any advice on what, you know, what is to come for them and, you know, how do you feel sort of now if that's not too personal of a question? No, no, that's a great question. It's very respectful. Um, Yeah, I think, like, it's really interesting that Road Rage has just come out because... I think I went a bit crazy the first time that Donald Trump got elected and I really went into this place of like those people are doing this thing and I'm not, you know, like very um, self-righteous isn't the right word because I think there's a lot of despair associated with when someone like that is up, up, uh, holded by a system that's really powerful. Absolutely. And I think that's completely okay. And that anger has a place and, like, that self-righteousness is sometimes completely fair. Mm. Um, but I think, like, what what was helpful for me with, I guess, the process of this EP, which was because of a lot of different things, you know, it, it was the pandemic, it was stuff that was happening personally, it was stuff that was happening relationships and it was, you know, yada, 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 on and on and on, life, life, life. Mm. But, like when road rage like came out and I had to type out all the lyrics <laughs> with the um I don't know the 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 printy thingy mm-hmm. I was like oh my god that is so funny because that's like this idea that we are the traffic 
is quite funny. Like when you're like stuck in traffic and you're like, there's so much fucking traffic and you're like, oh, I'm the traffic. Mm -hmm. It's like this thing of like, it's so easy and and sometimes completely fair to be like other people have done all this stuff and they're all fucked and I hate it. Absolutely. You are perfect and they are fucked. And that's completely true. (laughs) (laughs) It also can be true sometimes. And I think it's once you've gotten past this processing thing to be like, okay, if you're accountable with yourself every day, it's actually easier to hold other people accountable. Because I think sometimes we're like, it's very easy for us to like feel like we're not doing enough or feel like we're not saying enough or feel like we're, you know, not smart enough or something. And then so we point at people that we think are kind of pressing on that button. Mm -hmm. And I think that when I read the lyrics for Road Rage and I'm like, yeah, like me and my sister were having an argument in my head and her being like, you're so angry about stuff. That's so annoying. And I was just like, I remember just being like, but there's so much to be angry about. And I was like, yeah. And then I think now going back to it, I'm like, oh, I needed to like listen to how I was feeling and actually get in touch with that rather than just like at people. Um, But I think that there's like just the stages, just let the stages happen. Because if I hadn't have gotten all self-righteous and, angry and cranky and frustrated and all of those things which are totally justified and yeah then I wouldn't have been able to be like oh okay I understand what has happened in my life now Mm. so I think just like sitting sitting in the mess and I think holding yourself accountable is really important when when things are really bad because I think when bad things are happening to you you feel like this thing of like I want everyone to know how hard it is for me Mm. um but you're still kind of a citizen of the world and you still have to be a part of the world and and so even if you can in those stages go yeah I yeah I have a lot of hard stuff at the moment but I'm still being a bad friend to this person because I didn't message them and they had something big on or I still was late to that thing and that's annoying for my girlfriend or, you know, like it's, it's actually healthier. Um, So I think that that was one thing that I got out of the road rage process that sometimes where the traffic and that's annoying. (laughs) I really appreciate that. Yeah. I'm not thought of like, you know, especially when you are in those moments of either frustration or like grief or anything, it's like, Everything around me is wrong, but I'm fine. Like it's, it's all like, encompassing. Yeah. yeah, I'm okay. This is fine, but this is so all wrong. And it's like, no, it's actually it's all wrong. Yeah. yeah, you should actually just sit with that yeah. feeling and just really tease it out. But yeah, no, so so important. Yeah, it's oh. it's a wild world out there, and it's complicated. And yeah, it is. It mm. is. As um, and sometimes they're all wrong, and sometimes you're right. So. That happens occasionally. Exactly. Um, feeling. Yeah. yeah. Um, to quote yourself to yourself, there's billionaires for president. Exactly. Finds in hospitals. So, uh, you know. Yeah. yeah. Was, uh, That's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> love that song. So good. <laughs> um, and I guess coming, you know, having that such sound advice and such a nice thing for fans and like anyone really to hear that kind of notion, um, to lean back into the fans, that slight pivot here. Can we um yep. expect to see you anytime um soon in a live show or anything like yeah, that? Yeah, what's coming oh, up? Yeah. Plug um plug for us. Well, I just played two shows. That was the tour for Red Rage. And then I have Woodford over Christmas, and that's kind of the one near Brisbane-ish. Oh my that's God. the that's the next festival. So I'm doing that one. But, yeah, I, I, I've i only finished school two weeks, three weeks ago. Well so I've been – um. thank you so much. Thank you. I've handed my library books, books back now so I can actually graduate, which is nice. <laughs> 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 so like, like, happy. They're um, mm. doing the thumb up. They're like, all right, they can graduate now. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> Yeah. So um yeah, so it's it's definitely been um 
a weird time for music stuff with my managers, <laughs> them having to deal with me being at school for nine hours a day. But now I'm free, and yeah, I mean, I'll be playing. I'll be playing more shows at some point. It'll just be like, you know, getting back, getting back into it. Incredible. Exactly. And look, we're pretty lucky the um, EP is coming through, so we're a bit spoiled, you know. We, we are greedy here, though. We do like yeah, it here, you know. No, no. <laughs> um, no. um, so I guess that really wraps up our questions. Do you have anything else you'd love to, you know, say or add to um, add to this discussion? No, no, you guys are great. Thank you for your questions. Um, yeah. She, uh, yeah, uh, no, I, uh, what, 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 what was they tell me to do? Oh, yeah, follow me on Spotify and pre save the album. Woohoo!